going to do something that we haven't, that I haven't done at a Sunday morning services in decades. I'm going to actually devote the altar. So I invite you to just take a few minutes as I do this to get nice and centered. Um, this Tibetan bowl was part of my severance package from Pillars of Light in the 1990s when they dissolved. <laughs> Can you say magical pack rat? So the thing about using bells or bowls or anything like that for meditation is the sound brings you into the present moment but as it trails off it leads you into silence that's sort of the point of it so i'm not going to make it go wah, 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 wah. <laughs> i'm just going to like hit it once got it so here we go Creature of air, I do cleanse and consecrate thee in the names of the mighty ones of the east, casting out all negativity from you in this world and in all worlds. Blessings be upon you now, so would it be. O creature of fire, I do cleanse and consecrate thee in the names of the mighty ones of the south, casting out all negativity from you in this world and in all worlds. Blessings be upon you now, so would it be. <clears throat> o creature of water, I do cleanse and consecrate thee in the names of the mighty ones of the West, casting out all negativity from you in this world and in all worlds. Blessings be upon you now, so will it be. O creature of earth, I do cleanse and consecrate thee in the names of the mighty ones of the North, casting out all negativity from you in this world and in all worlds. Blessings be upon you now, so will it be. So will it be. Water and earth, air and fire, combine to transform and inspire. Align us with divine desire, our highest path we now require. Elements guide so that we may be on our path and on its stay. We ask thee now, show us the way of what the gods desire this day. O Lady High, O Consort Bright, illumine our lives now with your light. Today's topic is cultivating inner peace, which is a bit of a joke because you can't cultivate inner peace. <laughs> but I had to get you in the room. So, uh, marketing. Uh, the truth is, is that inner peace is within you, blah, -de fucking blah, blah, blah. You knew that already. But if you want to attain that peace, you have to get that that peace is who you really are. And everything that has ever been layered on top of it in this life or any other is not who you are. Identities that we've adopted throughout time, identities of race and gender and political leaning. Look, I said the P word. That's probably the last time I'll say it tonight, at least in this room. So how do we get to that eternal stillness and silence within us? Well, we've been told about spiritual practice, yes? Sitting in prayer and in meditation for hours and hours and hours. And if any of you are um, ever worked with the Ashaya monks, I know some of you have, they give a wonderful, wonderful spiritual practice. I love them so much. <clears throat> But the idea of having to practice at something that you really are is sort of a paradox. I have to practice being who I really am. Now, why would we need to do that? Because you get lost in this world. Because we've <coughs> practiced who we are not. 
and we have made false identities of ourselves. The truth is, and this is truth with a TH, you know there's a difference between what's true and what's truth. What's true is we're sitting in a room in Sayville, the silver broom in the temple with an altar for Sunday morning services. But the truth is, is you are an eternal being that has reincarnated on this planet more than you have underwear, more than you've had probably hot meals, and not just the human lives. Wouldn't that be nice if we only had human lives? No, you were plankton, and I don't mean the SpongeBob character, although, whatever. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Well, I, I, I can't divorce myself from my television upbringing, right? No, your soul is immortal, and your spirit is eternal, and your spirit is life. So if you're going to talk past lives, you've been trees, you've been fish, you've been monkeys, you've been snakes, you've been everything. It's just in this life you chose to be human, and you chose. So the truth is, no matter what happens in this world, the core truth of who you are does not change. Now, this has been a rough year. I think it started with David Bowie croaking over. So croaking over, I made a new term. Croaking, passing over, crossing over. Um, and it's not that I'm a fan. I don't like the word fan because the word fan is short for fanatic and I try to steer clear of fanaticism. And I mourned and I listened to a lot of David Bowie music, but then Prince died and that was like a pitchfork in my heart because I really did identify with him and his music. Having the Prince archetype, that makes sense. But then those were two dominoes of a long chain of loss, of death, of transformation, that now I find myself at Salentide. Because, by the way, if you think that the eight Sabbaths of the will of the year are just one day, ha! They are entire seasons. So I went into the underworld early. I don't know voluntarily. I just think a trap door opened, and rather than fight it, I went with it. Remember shoots and ladders? Yes. Yeah. It's sort of like, Whoa! and my head has popped up quite a bit, usually in service to others, usually walking or driving to this place helps. Because service has been of great service to me. I had a killer, killer, killer migraine right before the election where I was praying for my own death. It was one of the worst ones. And when you're in the underworld praying for your own death. By the way, anytime I have to fill out a form and they say, have you ever had suicidal thoughts? I laugh. I'm like, I'm a fucking mystic. What do you think? It comes with. Isn't it good to know that the truth of who you are is never born and never dies? This is the unbroken line of life. So here we are now in a world that has changed once again. But in, by the way, in case you didn't know, this world is always changing. Have you noticed? It's never been summer forever. It's never been winter forever. The stars have never, well, at least the planets at least, have never stood still. This planet has never stood still. We take it down to the subatomic level. We are quarks of energy blinking in and out of existence so fast we can't catch it. The mind can't even follow it. So cultivating the inner peace, being the sort of lie that it is, it's about re-identification. But here's what I've learned this year. You know when you have your nose rubbed in a a lesson? Anybody ever had your nose rubbed in a lesson? Where maybe you got it intellectually, but it was like... Oh yes, we are all one. Except those motherfuckers over there. Right? This is why I set up the altar for this. A feather, symbolic of the element of air. Since we have switch class students. what, What does air represent? The mind. You're not the mind. You are not the mind. You are not the element of air. You breathe the element of air. You are not your thoughts, but how easy is it to identify with the mind? Oh, incredibly easy. When you listen to the radio, are you identified with the voice on the radio, or do you know that that's a voice on the radio? If you hear David Bowie on the radio, you know you're not David Bowie, but you either listen to the song or you don't. You change the channel or you don't. Herein lies the cause of our suffering. That we allow the mind to use us instead of using the mind as the tool that it is. 
So, are, are we the mind? No. So let's move on. <clears throat> Fire. Desire. Are we that? No. You want something new every moment. Constantly changing, constantly fluctuating. Can you over-identify with a desire? Can it burn you and consume you and lay waste to all that you've created? Okay. And is it just focus upon what you want? Or is it also focus upon what you don't want? That is like a huge wrecking ball through your life situations. Mm -hmm. So we're not that either. It's a tool. <coughs> Tony grumbles, you said, want food. Eat that food, got to poop, want to poop. You're never going to stop desiring in this world, so best not to be identified with something that constantly changes, yes? yes. Here's the real tricky one. Water. Here. It's holy water. The magical spritz. <laughs> spritz. It's holy water. We should be loving water. Emotions, <coughs> feelings, intuitions. <laughs> Come and go like weather and bloat. <laughs> Are we that? Is there such thing as an angry person or a happy person or a joyful person or a depressed person? Oh, we have the language. But is that who we are? No. You will never be your emotions. You know, I'm a, a, a great lover of the author Terry Pratchett. If you haven't read his stuff, I highly recommend it. Science fiction fantasy croaked last year. Broke my heart. Um, yes, he started it all. He was the first one to go. It's yeah, he, he did. Well, that was last year. He croaked over? Yeah, he croaked he over. Croaked over. <laughs> he made a new hashtag. Hashtag croaked over. Um, but in one of the books, because death is a major character in the majority of his books. He's got a really deep, dark voice if you've ever watched any of the animated stuff. And essentially, it's really hard to be angry if you don't have adrenal glands. So what happens when you croak? Emotion is not something you take with you. So this idea of angry ghosts and angry spirits is, in my experience, 100% hogwash. You are who you really are is untouched by that completely transitory. And aren't your emotions just based on the most trivial things? Long line at a red light, you're frustrated. Green light, green light, all the way home, you're happy. The tiniest of circumstances changes your emotional state. That is not who we are either. But now here's the big one. Salt for the element of earth. What's that? Good. It's the physical, the body. You will never be the body. You will never be the body. You are the spirit that focuses into the body. Is the electricity the toaster? What happens if you unplug the toaster? The toaster remains, but it is no longer active. So it goes, your nervous system without the electricity of the life force, <clears throat> just a lump of flesh. Intricate, fascinating to study. One thing goes out of balance, the whole <clears throat> thing goes kerflui, right? Touch the wrong doorknob. <laughs> Cough up for weeks. You're not the body. Why are you not air, fire, water, and earth? Because they are transitory. They are temporary. They are fleeting compared. But what element have we not looked at yet? Look familiar? Yeah, she made this. The witch, it's, it's a pentacle of the witch's pyramid. It says, um, to know, to will, to dare, to be silent, and to go. <laughs> to go. <laughs> this is what we are. We are eternal, immortal spirit. And just to clarify the word eternal, because I used to think eternal meant all of time. If someone says, how long have you been on this line? Eternity. <laughs> how long have you been waiting? Eternity. So I used to think that had something to do with time. Eternity is without time, timeless. You are timeless. 
You are timeless. Continuously ongoing. Yes. And yet, birthless and deathless, no beginning and no ending. I'm not going to quote Jesus. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. That is who you are. He wasn't just talking about himself. In fact, he rarely just talks about himself. One of the great wisdom teachers who gave us a lot of insight that I know as witches we tend to poo-poo it. We tend to push it aside. But you know that what he said is also sort of in a way what Lao Tzu said and sort of in a way what Buddha said and that wisdom is wisdom because wisdom comes from the spirit. Yes, it is of course channeled through words and of course you have a desire for peace and a desire for wisdom. And of course there are times where you feel wise. Yes, couldn't you say that wise is sort of an emotion? You feel wise. Even the word peace can be seen as an emotion while the body constantly changes and shifts. We are in a rare, rare, rare opportunistic moment in this world where we are seeing in the outside world such drastic change. The level of fear in our community, most of it, I won't say all of it, has skyrocketed. How do I know this? I've been counseling people for about two weeks not to mention going through my own personal hell, crucifixion, ashes, in order to rise again and again and again and again. So what have I learned? Here are a few things that I've learned. All you have is now, and all you need is now. When the future gets here, guess what it will be? Now. now. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Two weeks ago, I was freaking out. And then I had this moment of clarity granted after prayer. I asked for clarity and I got it. The only thing that was freaking me out is what I was thinking. That as I looked around me, there's a little roof over my head, the cats were still there, the pure pitcher filter was still working, <laughs> the microwave still worked, <clears throat> the bills were getting paid, that it was the mind. Running, 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 running so fast. Making a constant commentary. That's what was obscuring the peace. The peace that at the core of who I am is unchanging. I'm going to use a very ancient metaphor. On an overcast day, has the sun gone out? No, the clouds just obscured the light. The sun always shines. Do you know day and night are an illusion? <laughs> the sun has gone down. <laughs> okay. uh, which class cycle one, right? Does the sun rise in the east and set in the west? And you know, new students are so cute. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Planet turns. Planet turns. And we mark our lives by the turning of the planet thinking of sunrise and sunset, total illusion. That it is our beliefs that torture us, our desires that burn us, our emotions that drown us, and our bodies that imprison us. But then if those four elements, I just made them very torturous for a purpose, because they are neutral, it's what you do with them. But can they imprison, torture, drown, consume, burn, something eternal? You can't achieve peace with the mind alone. You can't think your way into peace. Tried. Oh, does everybody remember affirmations? I started affirmations in like 1987 with Louise Hay and Shakti Gawain. I've been doing this for a real fucking long time, people. So I, you know, I've gotten enough under my belt on this to know all is well in my world, all is well in my world, all is well in my world. And then came EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, all is well in my world, all is well in my world. <laughs> Here, let me give you some Reiki. You're out of emotional balance. Reiki, Reiki, eggs and bacon. Reiki, Reiki, eggs and bacon. That shit bounces off unless you are tuned to it. It's so funny. It's spirit giving spirit to another spirit. 
what is required of us is a re-identification with truth. And a truth that has no words to it. So that's why you can't think yourself there. Look, I went to therapy. I'm glad I did. I went as a child and I went as an adult. Because I was raised by crazy people. Anybody else? I don't know anybody who wasn't. But isn't the seed of that insanity that you're something other than the divine? Isn't insanity believing a falsehood? Believing an illusion is real. So really, sunrise, sunset is crazy. Ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> that shit ain't real. Is believing that one person who doesn't even know your name is in control of your destiny. First of all, is the idea that you're separate, separate from that person true? Well, it appears true. But here, and I've been saying this for decades. Oh, we will link pinks and hands across America, and we are the world, and we are all one, until... We disagree with somebody. And then, no, that's not me, that's them. That crazy motherfucker over there is not, I am, I am one with everybody that I like. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that word like mean? It means alike. To identify means to make same. So when you identify with one way or another, <clears throat> You have added on something that, first of all, isn't real. And then, of course, what you have added on will change. Have you ever been identified with a romantic relationship? Have you ever gotten lost? I lost myself in a relationship, so I have to be single because I lost myself. You can't fucking lose your true self. <laughs> but you believe, and you identify with the desires. <clears throat> I'm everything I am because you loved me. Makes me want to cough up a hairball the size of a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> and codependence can only affect you at all if you think you are separate. 